Hey, 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 yeah. So it is 6 30 and um, we're live. First of all, I need to make an apology regarding why I'm having a live stream today instead of yesterday. As we had agreed last week that every Saturday at half to six, we are going to have a live. If you are paying close attention to my mouth, I am actually struggling from a mini toothache. I know at some point it's going to escalate. So it's making me speak very funny, especially with my lips moving very funny. And the reason why I was not live yesterday is because the pain was really doing a number on me. So that is why I could not go live. I know I should have probably said something on my community tab, but I was just too much in pain. So today it's a little bit, um, how do I put it? I can still feel it, but at the same time, I can't feel it. It's like this annoying, constant feeling that there's pain, but it, there's not pain. I don't know if you know that type of feeling. I can't explain it. I don't know how what it's called, but now it's making my lips move very funny. If you noticing my lips and probably my speech as well, at some point will get a little bit slur uh because my mouth kind of like fills up with saliva and now and again i'll have to swallow just like that so uh so i apologize that i did not come but today is sunday and i thought let's not waste the sunday evening and let's have a live stream and i see that i'm there's four of you already hello everybody that is there but i also see that there was okay let me just put this on silent because it's just going to disturb my chain of thoughts um as well oh, oh yeah as i was saying i see there is a um somebody that has been leaving comments uh as of uh, the time when i scheduled this live fate dalasile i think that's how you, i'm not sure if i pronounce your surname correctly uh, she says, we'll be waiting. I'm still puzzled. Who runs away, leaves her girlfriend, knowing she's in... <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> One person, please. Thugs are still in-house comfortable without thinking that that person might go uh, be gone to seek help. I know what you mean. Even when uh get robbed with someone, once one person gets away, thugs... What disperse exactly? Cause they're afraid you might be gone to seek help. I've experienced robbery a few times. Actually, you know, there's a thought, not exactly a thought, a memory that came back to me back in Hillbro. Uh, we were in the house. I was just about to leave to church uh, around 6.30. And then people walked into the house with guns, they were just pointing guns at us. They literally took our my mother's bed lifted it and told us all to go underneath the bed and they kind of like uh threw the bed right on top of us while they ransacked the house i can't i can't think wait, wait, wait what's the word i'm trying to say here i can't believe that my mind was 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 suppressing this memory until it hit me like oh my goodness we were once um broken into it wasn't even a break in because the kitchen door was still open it was my mom, it was my two little sisters at the time, and my older brother. I think we had two, my mom had two visitors. Oh, and my mom was going to have a night shift. So two of her friends that they usually go to work with uh, in the, for the evening shift, they had come to collect my mom and then they would leave together. So my mom had just finished bathing and I was also just finished doing my homework and about to go to church, like uh, the midweek service was a Wednesday. I was about to go to the midweek service and uh yeah then boom these people uh walked in and they pointed guns at us of course we did as they, they told us and then uh they lifted the bed my mom's bed and then they told us to go underneath it i was so certain that they were going to shoot at us from the top but anyways they ransacked the the house i remember they stole my id they stole my mom's id i think I can't remember what else, but there were, excuse me, there were valuables that they actually stole, but most of the things that were valuable to us were, were our identity documents. I remember being so terrified that, oh my goodness, they're going to do crime with my ID. And forever, ever since 
that time to this very point, I would always go to home affairs and check if I'm not married. I will always check if my ID is not maybe a wanted person so that I can always go to the police and say, hey, my ID was stolen from me during a, um, what do you call this, a break-in and they stole my ID. I'm not the person that has done whatever. I always went to clothing store, like I would go to individual clothing store with my ID and check if I have an account there. I will go to each and every bank in South Africa as well and check if I don't have a bank account. That thing is so traumatizing, but I have since kind of like um, slowed down on that. I think as far back as 2016, 2017, I stopped doing that because I thought I was torturing myself. When you lose your ID, it is very, very painful. But anyways, I was just telling you that, or sharing with you, that we actually had people that walked in. And I'm telling you, they were swearing. They called us all kinds of names. I think they also managed... Okay, I was still like a scruffy little boy. Of course, they would not be. They just threw me under the bed. And of course, I complied because I'm terrified of guns. I just complied. I went under the bed. I grabbed my two little sisters. I remember I was holding them, uh, like keeping their heads down because my other little sister was trying to cry, basically tried to scream. I kind of like held her mouth like this so that she doesn't make any noise and get shot in the process. So it went quiet. And then when it went quiet, I remember it was my mom. Uh, she's quite stubborn, actually. She lifted the bed and went out to check, or maybe, I don't know, to fight. I don't know, whatever it is she was thinking. But they were already gone. They took what I said they took from us. And, uh, of course, there was nobody that escaped and uh, did not come back to uh, report that there are people that are holding up my family and some family friends. Please go help. So we were all confined into the house under the bed and that was that <laughs> but but this one this one this one <laughs> faith i know what you are saying because the question is how do you how do you manage to escape and leave behind your girlfriend whom i suppose you love because understand when she was asked about her relationship with long way she said, oh, we were very happy. We were a happy uh, couple, yes. Every relationship has its own issues. But that particular day, that is why you even came to the party, because we get along and we were happy. We were in love, blah, 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 blah. OK, cool. But then why didn't he go get help? <laughs> That's the question. He managed to open the kitchen door, flew right through it. And what happened? Because the next time we hear of him, he's at the hospital where he is now being told that Senzo Meiwa has passed on from the bullet wound. How, how is he explaining himself? Where did you go? W what did you do? Why is he not telling the rest of Okay, guys, I, I froze just like everybody seems to be freezing. <laughs> the freezing thing just kills me. <laughs> my brain froze. While my brain froze, I managed to run to my piri. I got to my piri. I told him that Senzo got shot. My piri is freezes. Because I'm asking her, please call the ambulance and the police, but she froze. And then my period in her freezing calls and stuff saying, who was outside in some vehicle with a dude, she comes back inside and she's told that Senzo Mewa is shot and then she also freezes. And then when she freezes, then uh, she says, okay, you know what, goodbye. I'm out of here. I know it's not a funny thing because her life was lost here, but the way the story is narrated on the stand, it is hilarious because it does not exist the script kind of like went south whatever script that these people wrote together that this is the this is the line or the chain of thought we are all gonna go with Zadina Komalogo really really cracked it open because now it's open for interpretation even though uh she is now trying to salvage whatever but then the thing is she's not salvaging any damage the person that is busy salvaging the damage here is the state. Every time the defense lawyers would touch on something that she has said either in her uh, evidence in chief the previous day, and now it's been questioned, the prosecutor will stand because he realizes, oh my goodness, my case just got bored so many holes and the water is leaking. And then he will stand up on objection 
And then when he stands up on objection, uh, one thing that was also kind of like making me a little bit like worried was the judge. But as I was listening to the judge, if you know they say listening is a skill, but when I'm listening to the judge, as he is correcting the defense lawyers, he is basically, if you're reading between the lines, he is saying, listen, I'm also present in this charade because that, there were no intruders. There were no intruders. The only thing that the judge wanted from the defense lawyers is to stop making presumptions or stop making speculations or reward your cross-examination in this direction. But there was a point where the camera, I, I saw it. I don't know if you did. The camera zoomed onto Judge Mukhwateng. And guess what he was doing? He was looking down and he was shaking his head. As if like he, the way he was doing it, he was writing something and he's like <laughs> saying this is bull s. If you really, really look at him, and as well, if you listen attentively, because you might think that, oh no, this judge is with the state. He why is he lenient with the state, but he's very harsh on the defense. I think if I was him, I would also be harsh on the defense because there's no case against the five people that are sitting there. And another thing that also got me was when uh, Zandile Kumalo said to the, when she was being questioned about the two men that pointed them with guns in the house, she said, and I quote, maybe I'm going to quote her in verbatim, but she said, two men broke into our house. I'm surprised to see five people in this court that one is not for me to answer, but the police. And I was like, whoa, state, you, you, your case just fell apart. This witness has just finished your case because it's true what she's asking. Two men, I've been saying two men. Why am I seeing five people? Why am I seeing five people on the dock? Because I can't speak for this one. I can't speak for that. But I can point, uh, what do you call this, accused number two. Which, by the way, she's not even sure if accused number two is the right person because she's being asked about the height and the complexion. And she's like, over the years, people do change complexions, people change weight. If they were big, they become small. If they were small, they become big. If they were light, they become dark. If they were dark, they become light. I didn't even know that was possible. Okay, I knew because I can tell about myself. I was very, 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 very skinny, literally skinny. Whenever wind was a little bit stronger, it tended to blow my feet and I would almost fall over. That's how skinny I was. And today I look big. That one I can understand. The part that made me a little bit like, really? That, that happens? is complexion. I didn't know a person can be light and as they grow. I know a child baby. Sometimes a baby will, when they are born, they are dark skin or they are light skin. And as they grow older, the skin tone changes either to dark or to, uh, to light or even lighter or even darker. I didn't know that adults, as they grow older, they also change uh, skin tones and things like that. But anyways, I <laughs> we, let me just get into the um, the live chat so that I do not overwhelm myself. Uh, uh, Faco Media, hello, Cactus. Nice to be here. Thank you for being here. I haven't seen you in a very long time. Welcome back. Docus Matila uh, says, say that again. <laughs> Just hilarious. <laughs> uh, Zilla says, Be, I've been waiting for you to analyze the show. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm much better when I'm doing it like this. Okay, maybe, okay, well, whichever way that you guys enjoyed, but uh, <laughs> I think live I'm able to express myself even much more or maybe even uh, expand on what I may have said in the video, because in the video, you also have to think about the, the, the length of the video, that it must not be too long, and then people start falling off while you are busy um, uh, talking. So there are a lot of things that I wanted to say that I did not include when I was editing. I edited a lot of things as well, and then later on, I was like, no, I shouldn't have edited that out. But anyways, it damage done. Uh, Gavsile Mabuza says, you are correct, Mr. Jumagute. I also saw the judge shaking his head. So you, that was a, like a tiny, I think even the camera person may have a little bit regretted why he did that because I caught it. And then I'm glad that I was not the only one who caught where he was shaking his head in disbelief that he already knows there were no intruders. 
I cannot wait for his judgment where he tells her straight because I think the judgment is going to be scathing on Zandile. Number one, she was obnoxious. Number two, she was arrogant. Number three, she was downright rude and sarcastic. That is not going to play in her favor. I'm telling you, in the judgment, it's gonna be, she may be the one who destroyed this entire case for the state. I think so. Um, Spiced Purple, hello, how are you? You making me <laughs> because it's hilarious. This whole thing is, you know, listening to her. You know, I got to a point where I got so fed up of her sarcasm. Now I thought, okay, let me stop being shocked at her sarcasm. Let me listen to this girl. And the more I was listening, I was in stitches. I was in, st I'm like, I, I, are you for real? <laughs> What would all say is hope this time I got into yes, you did. Uh you got just there, just there. <laughs> I started at a half past. Uh Tandem Temple says hello. I like your show. Thank you so much, Tandy. Thank you. Thank you so very much. So another thing that I picked up, oh my goodness, that when the defense was um relaying to the court about how their clients were arrested. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, this could have happened to anybody's child. Anybody's child, this could have happened to. You just go to the shop, go buy airtime, next thing you are in the police cells. Simply because this, the, the, the government has been making a promise of every Christmas, they are going to catch the people that have killed Senzo Meiwa. And I'm telling you, wait, before I even get there, the part where the police kept calling these people to the police station and light detector tests are done replays are done after how many years you are doing a replay after how many years you are doing a replay because after a couple of months a year or two people's minds as well they have a turn especially if it's a, a traumatic thing like i said to you guys i cannot believe that mm, I was a victim of people walking into the house with guns, but my mind suppressed that memory. It suppressed it. So when you come back and say, okay, replay that, I'm not going to tell you detail to detail how it happened. I will not be able to even to replay it for you because my mom also had the tendency of, uh, of changing her bed. Sometimes it will be facing south, sometimes it will be facing north, or whatever the case is. How will I remember all of those details uh, that happened back then. So now you are replaying after four years. That 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 to me said something. And I think I mentioned it in the video that the police don't believe that they were intruders. The police are frustrating them into a confession. Hence they keep calling them. Hence they keep interrogating them. Hence they keep doing uh like they, I thought I think they thought the light detector test was the one that was going to scare them into confession. That's what I thought, because now that was a scare tactic. And light detector test in any democratic dispensation in the world does not play a role in any evidence in court. It doesn't. So where did that come from? <laughs> and why the police, knowing fully well that they can't use light detector test to, uh, to investigate any crime? They can't do that. It's not part of our criminal justice system. It's not in the CPA, the criminal, uh, the criminal uh, CP, uh, criminal prostituting. What? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Criminal Procedure Act. My gosh, <laughs> what's wrong with my mind? It's not there because it's inadmissible in court. The moment you bring a um, a light detector test result to prove your case, that that will be thrown out because it's unconstitutional. So you can just tell that this was a scare tactic. The police believe that the people or the person that killed Senzo Meiwa is part of the people that were in the house. But who are they? So I think they already knew because they were zooming in on two people. I think they kept zooming in on um, Zandile, Kumalo, as well as Longwe. In as much as they would bring all the other ones, but I believe they were zooming in on Zandile and Longwe. And I think these two created a very strong front because Zandina is very adamant and she's standing on her ground 
unshaken or moved about the lawyer's involvement, even though I keep asking myself why the lawyers haven't asked them that, okay, when, when um, lawyer went through the kitchen door, what took him so long? What did he say? What took him so Why didn't he go get help? What, what is the answer for that? Because I think in Sandile Kuala's script, I don't think she wrote what he did on the outside. Because the only time we see him again in the script is at the hospital. In between him running out and the hospital, what was he doing? Where did he go to? Who saw him wandering around or maybe confused? or What, what, what was happening? But I can tell you, if it's true, if it's true, he was on the phone with his father. If it's true, he was on the phone with his father. And he couldn't care less what happens to the people that were in the house, as long as he will go back, get the gun, bury it. I don't know if you, you I don't know if you're following me here. What happened? Why the lawyers are not asking so when he Okay, I, I get it. They might, might cross examine him about that. Uh, you left the house through the kitchen door. What did you do? Who did you go to to seek for help? And why the help did not come when you actually managed to escape? The other question that I'm failing to understand the lawyers are not asking is the living room door, because they were all in the living room, remember? And when Longwe pushed the gunman and he staggered isn't that an opportunity for anybody that is close to the, the living room door to escape nobody was thinking about that what about her because she remembers that, that which is another thing i don't get her phone her phone okay before we get to the phone there are three people in the house that i suppose are famous this is Kelly Kumalo. This is Senzo Meiwa. I'm not sure what was Zandi Kumalo famous back then. Uh, what do you call it? A, a public figure? I'm not sure. But they say Longwe was. You are telling me between the three of them, no cell phone is ringing, no messages coming in, no. Because I'm assuming these people are busy. These are busy people. Nobody's phone is ringing, especially Kelly Kumalo being a musician. Uh, no producers, no event manage, uh, event coordination manager calling for a show. Nothing is happening? I don't get that part. Have, have you asked yourself that question? That three celebrities in the house and none of them, their phone was ringing. And then let's talk about the cell phone that Zandi Kumalo hid behind the cushion. The cushion. How, how? How two people standing, pointing guns at them, don't see Zandi moving with her hand? Come on. Unless you're telling me she's very good at being a robot, so you, you don't see her movement. Because number one, two people entering somebody's house, they'll be terrified. The, in as much as they're criminals, they will still have a that shadow of doubt that anything could happen. So they are scared. So one little movement, they are going to pounce. So she does the whole movement of hand going to the back and hides the phone. Being Zandi Kumalo, her phone that she hid behind the cushion also doesn't ring. You can't tell me all these phones are on silent. And these are busy people? Come on, people. This story is falling apart. This story, this, this story is falling apart because it just does not make any sense at all. Okay, let's read the, the live chat and then we'll go back to my channel thought. Um, Constant Kosi is in the house. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hand pink waving. Hi. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, Wimby, uh, hi, hi, you are hilarious. Come across your podcast accidentally and been hooked ever from Botswana. Hi, <laughs> thank you so much. I hope I pronounced your name okay. Let me try Wimby. 
would I be correct if I said that? Uh, thank you, thank you so much uh, for stumbling over my uh, my channel. Thank you, thank you, Docus. Hello, Constant. Uh, Dicoliza says, I think that full theory is coming to add up. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the trial that is nullified now, I didn't watch it. I was not interested, uh, but I was interested in the outcome. But I heard that therefore was, how do you put him? He was a maniac, not even in a, in a, in a negative way. Like he was a pain where the sun don't shine for the judge and the state. And I don't understand why for the judge, but okay. And then Tandim Temple says, Clancy, these people are criminals. They were supposed to be locked. And why was uh, the father come to the hospital? Was he living around Foslaras? I don't think so, because from what I understand, he stays in Dernfern uh, four ways. And that's also very interesting that he drove all that way to Foslaras to do what? Who was he there to represent? Did you know, uh, uh, what is his name, uh, Senzo Meiwa? I doubt, but I'll tell you my theory. I think I did give you guys a theory in one of the videos, and you guys chose uh, scenario number one. And I still think that's what had happened. But I will repeat it for those that who did not uh, see that video. Please remind me in the, in, the, um, in the live chat to give you my theory as to what had happened. Uh, uh, Tandy says, I mean Longo's father. Yes, no, I, I got you. That, because that's a question I'm asking. He's from Dunfern, from what I understand. That is probably like almost an hour's drive from four ways to Fosloras. Maybe 45 minutes, I don't know. Somewhere there. Uh, teacher Eunice, Kenya. Hi. Hi, Clancy's. It's Teacher Eunice watching from Kenya. Hi, Jumbo. <laughs> How are you guys in Kenya? Um, thank you so much for being here. I highly appreciate it. Uh, Woku all says, I have not even tried to follow this case on my own. I rely on any analysis that I'm giving, uh, what, uh, I'm giving sense. Okay, English there, my friend. <laughs> English, uh, it never allowed us. Uh, Doc says, uh, where was Longo when she ran to Mount Piri's house? Exactly, because I would have thought, okay, guns have been, uh, what do you call it, shots have been fired, Senzo is hit, I froze a little bit, woke up, ran out to Mount Piri. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Yes, before we get to Mount Piri, there are next door neighbors. This down next door neighbor, this next door neighbor, and the opposite next door neighbor. But no, you run out of your house, go a couple of houses down the street into my Perry's house. Sense of urgency, emergency. I don't care whether you are in talking terms with your next door neighbor or not, but scream, say something. Let them all come out and say what, including my period there. If she hears your screams, kneeling on the ground and screaming for help, please. And so he's shot in the house. Two people entered. <laughs> I'm not being dramatic. I'm not being dramatic. I am saying something that in any of us will do. Any of us will do. But why didn't she do it? No, she skips. The next door neighbor, who, by the way, the father was an ex-cop. Ex. <laughs> this script fell apart. She needs to accept it. This script fell apart. Tomorrow, when she takes the stand, uh, I think she needs to say, "Okay, court, let's restart this uh, movie again because somewhere, somehow, things got chopped out <laughs> or chopped in." Because one moment. She says in her chief in evidence, uh, is it how do you put it? They were led to the kitchen by the thugs. But no, Longway pushed one of the thugs with a gun. And when he staggered, they all got up and pushed them into the kitchen. Why push them to the kitchen? Why push people with guns to the kitchen? Make it make sense. And then when you were in the kitchen, what were you planning to do again? And then two, 
Kelly Comalo is locked in the bedroom, which I assume the child is in the same bedroom because Zanti says she did take the youngest child to bed early. And I don't think the child would sleep in the mother's bedroom when the other bedroom Kelly Kumala sleeps in. So the child is in there. And Senzo, when he's sitting down watching his girlfriend getting attacked by the second guy and his child is on the other side, he just sits there like, okay, um, okay, let's leave Senzo. Kelly Kumala's mother. What is she saying? Because as a mother, you are seeing that my child and my grandchild are in danger. Rather shoot me. Rather shoot me. That's what I believe a mother would do. What about Zandi? Your sister and your niece, they are in danger. You also not saying anything? Doing anything? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, but she was dishing her sarcasm. So people mean I live for sarcasm. <laughs> if you didn't know, <laughs> sarcasm. sarcasm is my thing. I find people who are sarcastic, especially in Venank, to be a little bit sharp, but not sharp at the same time. <laughs> because she was going for it. She was a hostile witness. Let's just put it this way. She was a hostile witness. Uh, let me go back to uh, the uh, live chat. Um, okay, where are we? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, that's a good question that you asked there, Docus. Where was Longo when she ran to my period's house? Did she see him? What happened? Tandy says the other things, uh, people, are, people are outside, but no one's seeing, uh, seeing intruders coming in. That's true. That's very true. And another thing that I didn't quite get was the next door neighbor. The, um, what is the surname again? Tashes. Is it Tashes? He said he could see something is going on in that house and then he blew the whistle because there's like a, what do you call those people, a police forum in the community and every household was given whistles. And I found it very interesting that the Kumalos did not have a whistle. When they're, when they're not attending these meetings, where they do people in the community even like them? I have a, I have a very strong sense that nobody likes those people except for the for the Piris. I, I I doubt that. I think people don't like them. I wonder why. Um. Um, Mwibi says you got the pronunciation correct 100%. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mwibi. Thank you, Mwibi. Mwibi. Um, it's a Zambian name. Oh, okay. What does it mean, though? I've never heard it before. It's, it's, it, 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 it's kind of like nice on the tongue as well. Mwibi. 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 <laughs> I've never heard that name before. Betty, hi! All these people must go to jail, period. Eventually, they all will go, but initially, had anybody told the truth, it would have been culpable homicide. I think in the U.S., they call it second degree, um, meaning that you didn't kill with the intention of killing. It was an accident. Now, because a person's life got lost, therefore, your punishment will be a suspended sentence of maybe four or five years. They would have long been free today. Even the criminal record would have been wiped out by now. But no, they are holding on to this bone and they're not letting go of it. <laughs> uh, Snazzy Doll says, I agree, she needs to provide more clarity on suspect number two. Suspect number two, I felt that he was so blasé, relaxed. He failed to, op uh, to fight Kelly Kumalo by the door, he couldn't enter. And uh, so he was just a statue. Because the next time we hear about him, is Zandi trying to get uh, Tomato's crutches and try to... Imagine this. You, you say you're short. There are people in front of you. You see crutches and you try... 
try to hit the head. You're telling me this tall suspect number two is just looking at her like, what are you trying to do? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is comedy. She's trying to reach with the crutches, but Tumelo realizes that no, this girl is too short and she's not reaching. He takes it and go. <laughs> and what does he do? <laughs> what is this tall, uh, what do you call suspect number two doing? We are big. What, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But Snazzy, why did you do this to me? To <laughs> believe that all these people need to be jailed, period. Yeah, they, I, I eventually, I think this judge is going to make um, some finding that people that know the truth are the people that were in the house. Uh, there's no such a thing that they were intruders in the house. That's, that's, that, that didn't exist. People who were in the house know the truth. They just need to tell the truth. Period. <laughs> Walk with all. Yo, the way I battle to scream, I cannot relate, relate to your solution. No, I get it. I get that there are people who can't scream. But people who can't scream, you know, how do I put this? You know when you are in danger, every one of us has this survival instinct. There is something that you are going to do in order to survive and secondly, to save the people that you are in danger with. You might not be able to do it with your vocal cords, but there is something that you'll be able to do it with. Why was it not that? And number two, these are singers. These girls have power voices. Zadi has a power voice. Kelly Kumala has a power voice. Why in the bedroom when she realizes she's won the fight and she's already locked in the bedroom, open the bedroom window and scream? Why did she do that? Open the bedroom door and scream. I, I don't know. Have you have you have you heard Kelly Kumala sing? Oh, clean <laughs> Okay, let me let me. See that. <laughs> but the point that I'm trying to make is this family has power voices they can scream why didn't she scream when she managed to escape into the street after Senzo Mayor was shot why does she skip so many houses before she get to Mapiri's house she said that in court I'm not saying this uh from my own the sucking it out of she said that in court that Mapiri's house is down the street a couple of houses opposite I don't know whose house Make it make sense. Uh, <laughs> but I get you. I get you. Not all of us have that 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 screaming voice. Nkulego Masilo says something fishy about these witnesses very much, especially Zandi Kumalo. Nkulego continues to say lawyers are going to are going for a, a car horn formation. Wait till you see. No, definitely they already started. They already started circling around her but the problem is i'm not quite sure i don't have to say this and i get myself in trouble not every lawyer let me put it this way no no how do i don't say this without sounding oh gosh but i think you understand what i'm trying to say but i'll say it this way not every lawyer can express themselves as per their I'm circling back to that, what I want to say. Okay, let me put it this way. There are some people in the SABC ENCA comment live, uh, live chats where they accuse some lawyers of being UNISA lawyers. So I'm think, I think that's what I'm trying to get out. That not every lawyer can express the way they will. Or even when you listen to the cross-examination, you I found myself a number of times would the lawyers already have uh, the defense lawyer? I'm like, no, 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 you shouldn't have asked the question that way. And then the judge will intersect. I'm like, this is exactly what I meant. 
You shouldn't have asked it this way. You shouldn't have said it in this way because the way you sound as if you were there and you should not, for example, I'll give you an example about uh, uh, what do you call this suspect number two. He asked Ms. Uh, Zandi, that, so you say that suspect number two was just standing there doing nothing. That's speculative. You were not there. And the judge said, no, do not. You are putting yourself in the, as if you were there. And I was like, and then he abandoned the question altogether. And I knew where he was going. I knew where he was going. And that question was very important to be asked, but it was asked in a, in a very, um, in a way that it shouldn't have been asked. And the, the, the prosecutor rightfully stood up in objection. And he did object. And I was like, okay, now let's rephrase the question. But he didn't rephrase it, he abandoned it, and he continued. So that's another thing about the lawyers, that indeed they, they, are, they are doing that. You know, they are, they, are, they are circling, but they are not going fully because I think they're having expression problems. Expression problems is what I think they're experiencing. Yeah. Uh, Tandy says even when she used the uh, the crouches, uh, oh the crutches, she couldn't reach the guy. How short was the cr the crutches? Is Zandi a dwarf? Sorry <laughs> to the no, a dwarf means a short person, of course. Um, I don't know. I, I she looks tall to me. I mean, oh maybe it's because of camera angles and things that it makes her looks a little tall. I don't know how short or tall she is. But she says she's short and she could not reach. And secondly, there were people in front of her basically um, obstructing her purpose of hitting the uh, suspect number two on the head. Those crutches are so light. What, what, what material is that? I, I don't even think that's titanium. Is that titanium? That's how light those things are. Unless you are telling me that the crutches that she's talking about is the wooden one. You know, the olden days wooden ones. Those stuff are heavy. And they could do damage to a person when you hit them on the head with. But with this one, forget it. Forget it. Nothing is going to do. Um, what we all say is the fact that Kelly had not stopped loving things after. I know what you mean. <laughs> but my question is, then why those things also love her back? Why those things love her back? Because... Hey, I let's leave it like that. What was the fight between the two sisters about? This, this is my suspicion. Why they were, remember in her evidence in chief, uh, Zandi says when she came back from Mapiri's house, she saw Umelo, uh, those guys carrying or trying to carry sends her into the car but they were struggling she managed to open the front that's another thing i didn't get she opened the front door of the car and then pulled senzo from the front to sit him at the back because they were struggling to get him get him into the car and uh the 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 the, the situation now is how did she get to the back of the car and then she says when she was sitting at the back of the car behind Kelly, who was driving, she was saying things to Senzo. What were those things that she was saying that got Kelly angry? Because apparently there are some people who are saying, Senzo being a guy with a loose zip, chances are his pants kind of fell on Zandi as well. So what was it that she was whispering or saying to Sanzo that got Kelly as was driving like, what? <clears throat> Am I hearing this phrase? She was busy driving. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I think this is just me rubbing my two IQs that something Zandi said that Kelly remembered because immediately after that, we heard that the relationship severed. What was happening there? That's just my suspicion. I'm not saying it's the truth or it's a fact. Uh, Dicolizzo says the Senzo was fighting for Kelly, but Longwe just pushed and ran out to save himself, not caring about what is happening. Hi, Longwe doesn't have a heart, but he just ate his soup. The soup thing. 
But it's true. He demonstrated coldness to this entire family and the friends that were there. He ran out and never came back. Next thing we hear about him is at the hospital. What kind of a human being, what kind of a boyfriend is that? What kind of a potential son-in-law is that? I don't get it. I'll, I just don't, I don't get it. Sorry. Nguleko says, if they think judges and lawyers are foolish and they are in for a shock. That's true. Especially judges. You know, this judge is so lenient towards the state because he realizes that, listen, my man, your case, your case is falling apart. But he's also very stern on the defense because they must get it right. They have to get it right because there's no case against the five people that are sitting in the dock. Do not put them in a position where I will have to rule and say they were there because the defense lawyers made a mistake here and made a mistake there. Get these uh, innocent people free. Ask appropriate questions. That's what I think the judge at this point is doing. Uh, Tembelisha says that they are also rude. <laughs> I only seen, um, what's the name, uh, Zandi, that my goodness, who come into Alangewis. Tikolisa uh, says, walk with or they were blaming each other. Hmm, well, I wonder about what. Tandim Temple says, the fight, the fight of sisters is censor slept with Zandi. Tumelo said it to the court. Oh, really? You mean like in the nullified um, trial? But uh, that means that I'm... Okay, oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait, because it was still a testimony. It was not found to be a fact by the court, but that was my suspicion. That what was she whispering to Senzo while he was busy dying? And and Kelly heard that. Yo. Uh Slu Kumalo says Bongani in Tanzi Unem or Une Batishem. No, that's true. Oh my gosh, when you heard, did you ah oh, that that is so true, Slu. That is so true. I, I felt for him. In as much as I feel for the other ones, but his story that that touched me. That that made me realize that Upegitale when he instructed, okay, I'm just rubbing my two IQs. I'm not saying he did. I'm not saying he did. But I'm just rubbing my two IQs here. If he did, he probably instructed those detectives to walk into Tembisa. Anybody that resembles a Tsotsi, meaning now we are profiling people now, get them. And we're going to smear the death of Senzo Meiwa onto them. Or go into the records and find somebody who was accused of murder, maybe were ac acquitted, or maybe they have some kind of a criminal record who lives in Tembisa, go there, and uh, already they know the name and the, the address and things like that, and go get them and smear Senzo Meiwa's murder onto them. Because that story, when it was told, I believed it. I believed that that's what happened to him. I call it Batman and Ben. It's true what they say about in Zulu, they say it's all bullying Google again. I don't know how to translate that. Basically, hmm, how do you put that in English? Yeah, you someday you might find yourself in some kind of legal trouble without even knowing that you committed a crime, basically. When you never committed a crime. I don't know if I'm making sense. There is a percentage of people that are serving heavy sentences of a crime they never committed. But because somewhere, somehow, evidence seemed to point at them, that's why they find themselves in prison. And it's even worse when you have a lawyer that is not committed to your, to your case. That's just the unfortunate part. Yo, 
uh, Tandy says, the last quote, do you remember, Zandi, how much she knows Senzo when she was telling Mandy so Senzo didn't like fight? Really, Zandi? No, yeah, that, 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 that's another thing. Um, the SMS, though, or the, was it a WhatsApp? That was telling. That was telling. That, that was telling. That there was a huge problem. I even came to a conclusion, but I don't think that's, that's what had happened. Like I said, I'm going to give you my version of what I think happened. Kelly either was breaking up with Senzo or was thinking of breaking up with Senzo. Now, where did the gun come from? And if Kelly is the one who shot him, what was going on? Was he violent with her? And in self-defense, she there's a gun in the house, put it out of the kitchen and blew him? I don't know. I'm not saying. We are just now just speculating, guys. We are speculating. Because the way it was said, it was as if that was, if you're listening carefully, it, it sounds as though that's what she's saying. If you also listen to the WhatsApp messages between the sisters, it's painting a picture that there's a possibility that Kelly might be the one that pulled the trigger. But I don't think it's, it's her. I really don't think it's her. And this is my version before I forget. So there was a party in Fosloras. In the party, Kelly Kumalo, oh, I understand that uh, Senzo was supposed to go to an Orlando Pirates function that was held wherever in Soweto, and Mandy saw was going to be there being the wife. I'm not quite sure what is going on with the relationship between Mandisa and her husband, but Senzo decided to go to a party that Kelly Kumala and the family were throwing in Post Lawrence. Hence, he found himself there. And then Otomelo and what, what, what being the groupie, they went along with Senzo. And then, of course, Kelly Kumalo's mother was the one that was uh, was cooking isopo and, and things of that nature. And then this is what I believe had happened. I believe that Longwe and Zandi were having some kind of a riffraff. I think they were staying together, but because they were fighting, Zandi decided to leave and go home without telling Longwe where she went to. Somewhere, somehow, Longwe finds out that Zandi is with uh, Senzo Meiwa and uh, whoever, knowing Senzo Meiwa. I'm talking about longer. Knowing Senzo Mewa, he thought, oh no, Zandi is making a fool out of me with Senzo. Drives to Fort Lawrence. Indeed, there they were. And he, if you remember, the time was the September Kuala, like maybe around 5.30 to 6 o'clock when, uh, when, uh, when Longwe arrived at the house. Yet, these people have been in this house for a number of hours already because and all those sort of things. Now, Longwe gets there, he SMSs Zandi and says, I'm outside. And then, of course, I don't know, she goes outside, collects him, brings him into the house. But I don't think so. I think Zandi ignored that I'm outside. And Longwe got upset, walked into the house anyway. And when he walks into the house, I believe that Senzo and Zandi were in the kitchen. Maybe washing dishes or chopping lettuce or something. And maybe, maybe, Senzo was probably standing right in front of uh, Zandi, maybe even holding her in a particular way. Not to say that uh, they are in a relationship, but maybe just like, you know, friendliness. And Longwe walks in, sees that. He was already strapped when he got there. He pulls out his strap, points at these two. Probably Senzo stands in front of Zandi while Longwe is going on when Ugenzo Slima, what's going on between the two? Maybe also a little cloud nine. Now, what I think probably happens, Kelly Kumalo was in the bedroom putting the little one to bed, comes back out, sees a gun being pointed at her boyfriend and her sister, 
probably says to Longwe, what are you doing? Or maybe she says nothing and she tries to be a hero, try to grab the gun or hit it out of his hand, it goes off. Hitting Senzo, who by the way is standing in front of Zandi, protecting her from the deranged gunman being Longwe. I'm not saying that is that's the truth. Please don't that that's just me thinking. And the gun goes off, shoots Senzo. Longwe realizes, oh, what did I just do? Runs through the kitchen door to call his father. Hey, <laughs> I, 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 I think I may have killed somebody with your gun. I think that way, that's what happened. That's what happened. I think, I'm not saying the fact, I think that is what happened. Now Senzo is on the ground, bleeding. Tomelo and whoever and whoever who heard the commotion, they thought, let's mind our own business, let's continue with the soap and um, have talking or whatever the case is. And, and they, then they, they find Senzo on the ground, bleeding. They try to grab him to the car to have him driven to the hospital because they believe that if they call 10 for one or call the ambulance, it's going to take forever. And that's the truth. And he said, look, Sheen, Fosloras, tell me in Fosloras, you call the ambulance, it's going to come in two minutes. You'll be lucky if it came in five hours. So, of course, they already knew that it's not going to happen. They try to drive him themselves. Of course, Zandi, remember Zandi says, one of the bullets hit her on the leg. I think what she was saying is, when Senzo got shot, the shell fell, because she was standing behind him because he was protecting her, and it hit her on the, the, the shell hit her on the, on the leg. The story of intruders only happened, remember they said at the hospital, Zandi took the, saw the body, took the earrings and whatever else he was wearing. And then they said, we need to go because the media is about to come. This is when they say, hey, we need to get back home or go somewhere and cook up a story. That reminded me of P uh, Oscar Pistorius and the intruder in the house. So they probably took a leaf out of that story and made it their own. Because the truth of the matter is, Housebreaking in South Africa is very, back that time was very prevalent. Housebreaking was prevalent. That is why Oscar Pistorius himself used it as his defense. Like, I thought it was an intruder. I thought it was an intruder. Because back then, we had intruders in our houses. So they thought that is going to, uh, to save them. So the shooter, I still believe, is long way. But it was an accident. I don't think it was purposeful. I think it was just there to try and get his girlfriend back home with him. Okay, that's just me. Okay, let's let's read the live uh, chats. Uh, uh, okay, I read that one. The Colisa says you are absolutely right, but they say it was arrangement made by Kelly to watch Senzo and service him to avoid Senzo to go outside and sleep with other women. For real? Nicolisa says, I mean Zandi to... Okay, <laughs> I think I got that. I think I got that. My goodness. But, mm, people, mm. Okay, Tani says, I think the text was 2013. Oh. Oh, so they are just... Okay, but still, there might be a chance that there might have been an altercation in the kitchen, and maybe there's a gun that sits, stays in the kitchen, and maybe Senzo was a little bit rough on her, and she took it to defend herself. I don't know. I'm just saying. Sandy says, I'm Santin. So what about Santin? <laughs> hey, changing the narrative. Hey, my brother. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Good to see you here. <laughs> oh, yes, my brother. Yes, my brother. Thank you for being here. 
Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Say hi to Red for me. <laughs> Tando says the, the Pirates Party was... Oh, 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 I see. The Pirates Party was in Santon where Kelly was supposed to perform in Soweto. Oh. Oh, so it was not in Soweto. It was in Santon, that party. I'm sure he regretted why he was not there. Tandy says, last time Kumelo said when Longwe arrived, the house froze. This freezing thing. I, I This freezing thing, I'm afraid to know. That can't be a defense, honestly speaking. Tandy says, Senzo got angry, went out with Kumelo and Umtogo. Okay. Uh, allegedly. <laughs> Mabus. Allegedly. <laughs> you know, this allegedly uh, terminology makes me laugh because I don't, I don't know if people understand that it does not protect you legally. But what protects you legally is when you say, I think it's my opinion. Because when you say allegedly, it can be interpreted and you do not want to subject yourself into interpretation and find yourself in trouble. So, <laughs> but yeah, okay, allegedly. But for me, I'm going to say that's what I think. And this is just me rubbing my two ideas. You can't prosecute me or sue me for my own thoughts because uh, speculation is something that people do anyways, any given time. And we're going to use words such, I think, in my opinion, this is what I think. But if you're going to say allegedly, there will always be a... Because once you use the word allegedly, you would also have said something that you believe it was a fact when it was not a fact. So that's just a little tip that I'm giving you with this word allegedly. Don't just throw it around in, 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 anyway, anyhow, because it might get you to trouble. <laughs> Rather use in my opinion, this is what I think. I'm speculating that rubbing my two IQs or this is my two cents <laughs> or whatever the case might be. Leslie, okay, before Leslie, there's uh, Lonwabo. Allegedly, Longway kills Senzo because how can you run away leaving your, uh, your girlfriend behind and never shout for help? He even never called the police. You and I are on the same wavelength here. And I think... He was not pointing to shoot and kill Senzo, but it, he was, he just took out a gun at the spell of the moment because he was trying to intimidate his girlfriend. Probably it's something that he was doing all this time whenever they fought. And maybe that's why uh, Zandi ended up leaving without telling him where he was, where she was going to. And when he got angry that he's, she's in Fos Loras, why did he take a loaded gun? That's another question. Leslie says, the whole intro thing is well cooked here. Mm, it's a little bit sour, though. Longer kill Senzo, finish and clear. <laughs> Why was Chico called to come to the hospital? Excuse me, how Senzo and Chico related? That's exactly my question, too. Instead of calling the police and the ambulance, you call Chico Twala for what good reason? Because I understand immediately after that incident, Chico Twala reported his guns lost, stolen, whatever the case is. And I've also heard people say, what if the gun was already dirty? Good question. Why long we call the father first? Uh, uh, Lonova's, uh, okay, Woku also says, Lonova, that might be true. Recently, there were rumors that Longo was living as a hobo, probably hiding from all this court drama. Zanzi Reality covered this in one of their videos. I also heard something like that, that uh, he kind of like went AWOL since December, and he was only recently found, and he was living under a bridge somewhere. To me, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist either, but it sounds like guilt conscious to me. And apparently he's on drugs. And the uh, question is, what are you suppressing? What, what is it that you are numbing with drugs? What is it that we are running away from by living under a bridge? And yet you will have a beautiful home in Dernfern, four ways. 
I don't get that. I don't get that. So something is up there. And I think it's a guilty conscience. Sandy says Senso was, stop, uh, was stopping Longwe to fight Zandi. So was exa- Yes, yes, exactly. That's what I think as well. He stood in front of her, probably with his arms wide open and said, my, my man, no, no, no. This is not how you, 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 uh, you solve issues. And I think Kelly, I, th- I think Kelly might have tried to act like a hero because she was in the bedroom. And apparently the bedroom, they are opposite each other to the kitchen, according to what Zandi said in court. She says the kitchen and the, uh, the bedroom where uh, uh, Kelly ran to, they are opposite of each other. So probably Kelly went to check on the baby when she came out, she sees a gun being pointed at her boyfriend. And so probably she tried to run to get the uh, gun out of uh, long way, but it goes off and it accidentally shoots Senzo. What's so difficult to tell the police that it was an accident? That is what I'm trying to understand. Just tell the police that it was not intentional. Accidentally, this is what happened. I think the reason why Zandi is so adamant about this fake story is because she thinks that her sister is going to end up in jail because it's her fault that the gun went off and shot and killed Senzo. That's just me thinking. I don't know. I'm not saying it's true. Uh, At the end of the day, we all have brains. We can speculate. Um, Let's go to the live chat. Uh, Tandy says, Senzo was stopping long way to... Okay, okay, I think I read that. Uh, Ticoliza says, remember Longwe is a drug addict. Addicts do things on impulse. But was he on drugs that particular day? I don't think so. Maybe he may have been uh, uh, under some kind of an influence, liquor, but drugs, I don't think, he, was he on drugs already? Okay, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know them. I don't know them. So there's a chance. But I don't think he intended to shoot. I don't think he did. If he did, that means he was going to kill his girlfriend, probably kill himself. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And, uh, okay, the, the comment continues. That, that is why the father was called, so they uh, they cook and pay the police. That's another question about the police. The police messed up the crime scene. And uh, I don't think whatever evidence that is going to be presented by the investigating officer is going to hold water. Uh, That that is why I'm so afraid when I'm foreseeing the outcome of this case that Senzo Mayor's death may not find justice because of the crime scene. They might not find any of the seven guilty of anything or involved. And the five people that are accused, they will also be let gone because the crime scene was tampered with. So that's my fear that the court might not find a reason, uh, what they already call this. Um, I think the court is going to doubt the crime scene beyond a reasonable doubt. And as a result of that, the seven walk away and the five also walk away and nobody will ever be held accountable. That is my fear because the police, from what we understand, the crime scene was messed up with. It was messed up. Because there was a detective who works for another police unit who was there and I I hear he's the friend of Chico Twala. I don't know. That's what I heard. He's a friend of Chico. What was he doing there? <clears throat> the bullet shell. I don't know if they found one or two because apparently, from what I was hearing during cross examination, when you were doing spring cleaning, did you find another bullet shell under the cupboards or something? What what happened to the to the shell? What happened to the weapon? Whose weapon was it? So you see, without the murder weapon, there's no case. All this is circumstantial at the end of the day. When the crime scene is messed with, 
it all becomes circumstantial evidence. It's not solid. Our law is substantial, meaning that this is a computer mouse. This is a cell phone. So we can't talk about a computer mouse and a cell phone, and yet we don't see it. Where's the substance there? Because we know there's a cell phone exists, we know a, a computer mouse exists, but where are they for us to see with our own eyes, feel it, and stuff like that? Our law is substantive. It is not prescript, uh, prescriptive. So this is the reason why I think there's a chance that Senzo Meiwa's death might not find justice. I hope not. I hope people will be held accountable. And I still think it's the people that were present in that house. There were no intruders. I don't believe there were intruders at all. Um, where was I? Uh, okay. Mabusi says, who called Senzo's brother and said Senzo got shot by mistake? Hey, is that so? The brother needs to take the stand. We need to hear that. We need to, maybe it's Tumelo, because apparently he's a very close friend of the family as well, not just Senzo, Om Togo, whichever one of them. Uh, Tandem Tenbu says he was on drugs already because he used uh, to demand money from the, oh, or maybe that's why they were fighting, uh, in my mind, in my mind. Tandy, why Chico brought his police and the minister in Kumalo's house? Even the minister was there? Which minister? And why would the minister be? Whoa. Okay, guys, like I said, I gave up on this case in 2014. December 2014, I was already done because I foresaw that this thing, when I heard it, that the crime scene, was, crime scene was tempered with, I thought, what's the point? This case is going to be thrown out. And I never took an interest after that. I didn't watch the first trial. Not even one day where I sat down and I watched that trial because I felt that it was futile. And look what happened. It was futile. <laughs> um, Mabusa said Tefu must come back now. Yeah, I also heard a lot about this Tefu, the advocate Tefu. And how you even got debarred and brought back. And I'm thinking, what's going on? That part I've, I've heard, but I don't know why he was debarred. Lungile, Lungile, Lungile. The coconut just tried to peep in. Lungile, Lungile says the police must arrest Mampiri, who cleaned the crime scene. She did? We are on this situation because of her. She did? I'm shocked. Wow. That is obstruction of justice and defeating the ends of justice. Oh my goodness gracious, I can't wait for her to take the stand. If she really did this, I want to understand why she did it. Hmm. Juni says, Kelly is the one who called Chico because his son shot Senzo. That's why he came running. Yeah, because I think the first time I heard it was Kelly who called uh, Chico Twala. And I asked myself, why would you call Chico Twala instead of the police and the ambulance? Shouldn't Chico Twala have heard this like the rest of us on the news? I didn't understand that part as well. Nicolito says, Tandy, yes, he was already in, on drugs and jealous that Zandia might be going out with one of Senzo's friends. It's like Zandia was ignoring his calls and he got worked up. Yeah, I, I also believe that. I think he found out where she was and then went there. But he was already strapped when he went there. Why was he strapped and why the, the gun had bullets? What we all say is the court is slow, Tina. We are done. We figured out who the culprit is. <laughs> what we all, you and I, are known as court of public opinion. So <laughs> we 
we don't count. <laughs> but though we make sense, we don't count, but we don't, we make sense. Uh, so everything is to be followed though. Julie says Tumelo is the one who calls Senzo's brother. Yeah, because I understand he is known in the fa <clears throat> excuse me, in the family. Jennifer Nguanya says, what about the SMSs from Kelly to Zandi? Try and be neutral in your analysis. I've already covered that. You probably were not here. And um, I do get very much. Okay, never mind. Let me leave it like that. You were not here probably when I was talking about that. So, anyways, Tandi says Longa was angry because uh, he's been trying to call Zandi some days, but no avail because he had some rumors about Senzo with Zandi. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Mapiri, she she did. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that she she cleaned the crime scene. Ooh, and she, of course, she's gonna say I didn't know that I was not allowed. And you see, ignorance of the law as well is not a defense. Uh, and it's a crime to tamper with uh with the crime scene, whether you knew or didn't, is a crime. But now I think um, at the end of the day, and no, oh I want you to say something, but <laughs> I'm holding the beast back. I'm holding the beast. The beast when I come up, and I'm like, oh, no, let's not go there. Let's not go there. Uh, or, or we are done. Judge Clancy's will make a ruling every very. And I'm close. <laughs> I am so close to um, delivering my verdict. <laughs> Tani says, we are jury of this case. If it was uh, the US, the case will be over now. Well, I, I just think that they should have set down the matter for a certain amount of weeks so that we can get over and done with this already. But of course, they're going to let this run it's caused until all of the, the witnesses have taken the stand. And then, uh, yeah, I think I think this might actually be done by September, by end of September. So uh, the deputy judge president was, probably was correct in, in his, uh, um, uh, what do you call this, calculations about the conclusion of this case. I don't know. Wow, we got 100 people. For the first time ever, my life has 100 people. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, so I don't know. Uh, it might take... I think so. I think it, it, it might actually go uh, to be concluded by end of September. End of term, as they put it. But um, <laughs> there was another point that I asked you guys to remind me. And I could not, it's just sitting in the tip of my tongue. I have not. But anyways, guys, I think the, what is going to happen this week, uh, this week we are still going to see some very heavy cross-examination. And I think the defense lawyers, they really need to sharpen their skills of cross-examination so that they do not uh, put their clients in trouble uh, with, with the court. But I think at this point, the judge already knows that uh, the state's case has fallen apart. Uh, it's just a matter of completing everybody that is supposed to take the stand. And uh, and then a ruling, we're going to hear it, like I said, I believe by, excuse me, this time around, for real, by Christmas, we will know who did this to Senzo Mayor or not. That is what I think. But I will definitely be following this case for all of us, and I will definitely be dropping videos about uh, what I saw, heard, and what my head interpreted. And I want to repeat that. It's my head interpreting things, and I'm not saying in what I am saying is true. It's just me, just being a human being. That's it. And uh, we want justice for Senzo Meiwa, and we are interested, and we are a public gallery that will continue engaging on this case, whether some people like it or they don't, or they want to hear what they want to hear. That is the issue, not mine. Uh, so that is what I think. And I need to block somebody, actually. Actually, 
I don't want to block somebody. I want to hide them from the channel. Just a tip. If you're a YouTuber and you are here, if somebody is being a nuisance, because this individual is actually a nuisance to my channel, you can hide them from the channel. Every time they make a comment, they think we all can see the comment. But in fact, they're the only ones who can see the comment. But I get watch time from them. And I get paid through them. I think YouTube was a genius when it deals with haters. It, it, you can hide them from the channel. When I upload a video, they get the they get notification and they get to watch the video. And then when they comment, it's only them who see the comments. Not uh, None of us will see it. We'll not even know it existed. But I get the watch time and they get egg on their face. So that is what I think I need to do with this individual because I have been observing her. I've been observing. At first I thought maybe I'm misreading. Then the second comment came through and I was like, okay, the third one, the recent one, I'm now convinced that I need to hide them from the channel. We're not gonna be dealing with haters or people that don't have comprehension. Uh, okay, let me just finish the uh, comment, the live co comments, and then from there, let's call it a night because at eight o'clock, I'll be watching my friends changing the narrative. They are also going live. Guys, please do check them out, changing the narrative. Uh, they are friends of mine. Uh, please give them some support. They are going live at eight. So, I would like to be done by then, but let me just complete these uh, live chats and then I will say good night. We'll see each other again next week or uh, Saturday. But anyways, don't go, don't go, please. <laughs> don't go, don't go yet. Um, Songo says, Lamini, therefore, might come back for 375. Hopefully, I don't know. Oh, okay. Why wouldn't he come back, though? Uh, because it says Zandi and family will be in prison in December. Chances are. No, I don't think in December. I think they will be charged. They will be released on bail, but the trial will start next year. That's my thinking. Slu says, so what happens if the judge rules? Okay, wait. Okay, it got refreshed. Slu says, uh, so what happens if the judge rules that the accused are not guilty? Does this mean they'll start another search for the real case? I think they will be acquitted, but I think the judge in his ruling, he will say the seven people, one of the seven people. So now the investigators will now have to zoom in on those witnesses. They know who did this. I don't know. Or they will just throw the entire case out. And there's no justice for for, um, for Senzo. And secondly, once that is done, I don't think they can resurface this case because it will be double jeopardy. I don't know. I don't know. Lungila says, uh, all we are saying is allegedly. Yeah, we are saying allegedly. <laughs> Caroline Mube, why did you come now? <laughs> we had so much fun. Or maybe you were sitting in the wings. Why didn't I know about this? Oh my goodness, I put the notification since 12 this afternoon. Sorry, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Karen says, I'm only singing. Ah, oh, sorry, I'm about to leave as well. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Mwambi says, I have one question about defense lawyers. Why don't they ever object even when they clearly need to? Um, sometimes I think it's strategic that they don't because they're relying on the judge's discretion as well, that he is an intelligent person who, uh, who would maybe even himself in his judgment will say that I object to me. Usually they'll say they object, they'll say, I was not persuaded. I don't believe this had happened. So I don't think our court kind of like plays out like how it does in the US where a defense lawyer will just spring up and say objection or some, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe there's a strategy or maybe they themselves don't know when to interject with an objection. 
I don't know because what you're asking is also what I've been also asking as well. Like, hey, here you should have stood up in objection. Why don't you object? But I think the judge is um, is well aware that this part was supposed to be objected. Now, as a judge, he would question that in his judgment. I don't know. That's what I think. Uh, Mabusi says, please, guys, let's like. Oh, please, please do like. Don't leave without liking. Very important so that it becomes, what is the video call after the live? I know it's a replay. Oh, video on demand. It must also be a video on demand. And how you do that is by liking the video. Otherwise, it's just going to be a live that is just lingering in the space. And uh, it's not going to, it might not get pushed to anybody. So please do do like it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Abusia. I appreciate that. Caroline says, I thought the live was on the 23rd. Yes, today's the 23rd. Oh, I may I call, yeah, today's the 23rd. <laughs> Just Lucy Brown. Hey, some of us coming in so late. Sorry, time to go. <laughs> uh, Karen Luba says, I didn't see. Um, I am just joining now. Sorry. I, oh my goodness, I keep saying sorry. <laughs> because it says, who are your friends who will go live? I want to come along. Oh, I think there's some point where I'm going to get some, um, what do you call this, guests? And then uh, we're going to have like a live type of interaction. Hopefully, you guys can also come in, like get invited in, and then we have like uh, that. But I do pay for a StreamYard. I don't know why I'm getting the free version. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And this thing costs 500 rand a month. <laughs> I promise you. I get charged 500 rand a month from StreamYard, and I keep getting the free version. That's why you see a watermark there. The watermark is not supposed to be there. And also, I'm supposed to have, um, what do you call these screens for other people that I can invite, like you. I can invite you to come, and then we'll have an interaction. I can't get that on a free version. And um, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing wrong. And yet, I get charged, by the way, 500 rand a month for this. Um, let's see. Ah, OK. Lana Lando. Okay. Lana Lando. Okay. Okay. Wow. Nice name, though. <laughs> new judges. Is, new judge is in a hurry to close 363 and start 300, 375. Well, I, I know that he wants to get this matter over and done with because it has taken way too long. Because I think at this point, he understands that justice delay is justice denied and he wants this done in the, sp at the speed of light and i think he's doing great so far and i agree with him karen says i saw i saw it but i got the days mixed up i must have <laughs> i don't think <laughs> oh cecilia hi um av okay i don't know maybe it's an incomplete sentence but okay, hi, hi Cecilia. Uh, Glenn says, hope, uh, hope it's you and Lelo podcast. As a matter of fact, I was supposed to have Lelo in this live, but um, of course, I, as I explained earlier on, I had, I think I do have a toothache, but um, I could not call her through and say, hey, can you come live with me uh, today? But definitely, I'm during the course of the week, she and I, because we always talk. That's one thing that some people don't know. She and I bounce off ideas because we have the same mind. We call each other crazies. <laughs> See, now, now, I'm, I'm, I am now um, revealing our, our <laughs> we call each other crazy. <laughs> and then the people that follow us, we would like to give you a name of that nature as well. But at the same time, we're like, what people do they say? Uh, why are you calling me crazy? Because I think what we talk about it may sound outlandish, but when you but when you look at our predictions thus far, only one that has that has kind of like gone the other way because we didn't know that judges they can they can actually uphold their own judgment even when you uh, leave uh, when you apply for leave to appeal they will not overturn their own judgments. So we understood that quickly and then we moved on. Now we. 
we know that our prediction will come true at the Supreme Court of Appeal. If it doesn't come through at the Supreme Court of Appeal, but it will come through at the Constitutional Court because she still has two uh, more processes in South Africa and one internationally. So that is uh, where we are seated. But anyways, we do uh, talk and I thought I was going to call it yesterday for today and say, hey, let's have a live um, type of situation and uh, involve you guys as well, like call you guys in and, and then we talk and have some good old fun uh, together discussing this case. Um, yeah, definitely. What we all say is you should have put your name where the watermark is, I saw a demo on the StreamYard website. Oh, really? I don't know. I didn't know that. But no, I want to, I pay. I want the watermark gone. I want to put my own um, logo on there rather than this. I need to figure out how exactly to, because I've done it before. I don't know. I've done it before, but I'm not quite sure what step did I miss. Nicoleta uh, says, she also have a toothache, a problem, shame. Sorry, my siblings. Oh, she does. Oh, mm, okay. I didn't know. I'll check her out later on. But anyways, guys, uh, thank you all so much for being here tonight with me. I highly enjoyed it. My goodness, we hit 100 views on the live stream, something that I have never said before. I am so, so, so happy. I appreciate your support, guys. Always uh, appreciate your support. Um, and uh, let me get off here because I need to hide somebody from the from my channel and also watch Changing the Narrative. I think they've already gone live. Uh, I like getting there and also commenting and supporting my friends. And uh, I appreciate you guys so very much. Let's see each other again during the course of the week as we continue with this craziness in the sense of me you are case. I highly appreciate y'all. Love you. Mwah. Goodbye. <laughs> y'all made me laugh today. <laughs>